Hello YouTube. Today we're going to have a quick look at the Atari Portfolio which is a portable computer released by Atari in 1989. It ran a version of DOS that was compatible with DOS 2.2. It had an 8086, sorry, an 8088 processor which is compatible with the 8086, it's the 8-bit version. Running at 4.77 MHz, it had 128 kilobytes of RAM. As you can see, it's quite small, it fits in my hand. I don't have gigantic hands, I have normal sized hands, trust me, so that, that gives you an idea. Uh, I've got a DVD case here, an ASUS EPC 1000HD here with the 10.1 the inch screen, and you can see that it's quite a bit smaller. It fits, barely covers the keyboard standard 15.4 inch HP laptop and uh, you can see that <laughs> as well as hitting some keys and making the thing go silly it's a uh, quite a bit smaller it's very small there isn't really a lot on the portfolio you can see on the back it's pretty sparse here we've got an expansion slot which had uh, peripherals created for it to, for serial and parallel ports to transfer data to PCs or if you believe the movies devices for hacking into ATM machines then around on the other side you've got of course your AC input which is a 6 volt input and this was a slot for memory cards they came in 64 kilobytes or 128k sizes they were static RAM uh, powered by a built-in battery which uh, I think lasted for about two years to keep the data alive when it wasn't plugged into one of the into the portfolio. It takes three AA batteries under this little clip here. Uh, anecdotal evidence on the net suggests that this is enough to keep the thing, I'll just make sure the polarity is right there, to, uh, to run it for weeks on end. But whether it's because I'm using cheap batteries or because I have a faulty model, but I've only been able to get a few, hour, few hours out of this one myself. Okay, so we'll just turn it on and it boots into DOS or DIP operating system which was compatible with uh, MS-DOS 2.2. Most applications which had minimum hardware specs of a, an 8088 at 4.7 MHz and 128K of RAM in this kind of screen would work on this. Okay, we'll have a quick look at the text editor. There's not much to it really, it's just it's reminiscent of the old edit in DOS. Let's make a batch file to also demonstrate some dossy kind of stuff. So we'll get rid of the echo and we'll echo hello world we'll save it so we'll save our batch file as test.bat exit there's test.bat in the root directory there so we'll just type test hello world the keyboard the keys are quite small they're smaller than the pad of a finger but as you can also see there's enough space between them to make it uh, not too difficult to make sure you're hitting the right key. You've probably seen in other parts of my videos that I type quite freely on it. It's not a thumb keyboard. You can use your fingers on it, I find, if you have a good enough surface. I don't like the rubber keys. I'd rather clickety keys. The portfolio came with a few applications pre-installed as well as the normal DOS 2.2 ones you could download. Uh, Atari did put some keyboard shortcuts in for these, so the Atari key and W's to bring up the spreadsheet, you've got a text editor, an address book, and a diary and personal organizer. 
which, which alarms when dates are due and things like that. Let's bring up a uh, spreadsheet, Atari W is the keyboard shortcut, and up comes a probably a little different looking but still recognizable spreadsheet. There's four columns, four rows on screen. Uh, this is based on Lotus 1, 2, 3 as Excel was, so you should be able to survive if you know Excel. Uh, it supports all the usual spreadsheety stuff, punching numbers into different cells and formulas and stuff, but I'll demonstrate that later. The cool feature of the portfolio was a clipboard, just for copying and pasting text, as we're accustomed to today. It's not a multitasking operating system, DOS, however the state of the clipboard is maintained between applications. Uh, this is something that the iPhone has only been able to achieve recently, but we had it here back in 1989. Another cool feature of the portfolio was just its state saving. So if I enter the spreadsheet, it has come up where I was before, with the, even with the cursor in the same place. Likewise, if I turn the whole machine off, turn it back on, it comes back into where we were with the cursor still there. I guess you, you saw what the refresh rate was like on the LCD, it is it does blur a lot. You know, if I run the test batch file that scrolls text all over the screen, I guess it, it may not show up too badly on the um, on the screen that you're watching <laughs> this video, but it it does blur a bit. You know, if I do a list directory of the of the file system, it's from my end here. It's a little bit blurry, so I can't see you playing many action games on this. I've read all kinds of things you can download, Tetris and platform games and stuff, but I think that'd be a bit difficult to play. So they're actually a very cool little device and probably until the EPC, the 7 inch EPC came out a few years ago, probably still one of the uh, a very practical option in this niche market. Even though they're so old, there's so many functions and applications, the diary is really cool. So, so yeah, that's that's the portfolio. I'm sorry I don't have more peripherals, accessories to show off with it, but I, I'll probably pick up some crap off eBay very shortly.